Good morning, Bucknutters. It is Thursday, January 7th, 2016. I am Dan Rubin. This is the Bucknuts Morning Fire and some serious change. Thrilled to be joined, as always on Thursday, by 24-7 Sports Director of Recruiting, Steve Wiltfong, except today he's on location in San Antonio, Texas, for the U.S. Army All-American Bowl, representing 24-7 Sports. Steve, how are you? Good morning, Dan. You're doing well. You holding up out there? This is what, day four for you? Well, I got in Saturday, so I think this is day five. Or I, got, I know I have five full more days out here. That's what I know to be true. Gracious. This is the white special here. We're going to get started right away. There are plenty of dudes with the Columbus-based futures at the Army All-American game, but first we're going to start with what we're going to call breaking news, but topics of the day. We have him on the phone, so we want to talk about it. Chris Evans is a player that is committed to Michigan, but Ohio State seems to be dancing with him consistently, and they're back in the mix. Bring us up to speed. Well, Kerry Combs is finally able to offer uh, Chris Evans yesterday. Kerry has been in uh, touch with Chris for the entire process, and Chris has been a – this was – if this Ohio State offer would have came earlier, there's no question that Chris Evans would be a Buckeye. Uh, but Ohio State, uh, with the numbers that they were jumbling, didn't have a scholarship for Chris. Uh, but with all these guys leaving for the NFL, some opportunities open, and Chris was one of the first offers uh, once uh, Ohio State saw all these guys declare for the draft. He's very interested. I talked to two coaches at Ben Davis. The first one said that he thought he, that Chris could flip, but that he would for sure visit. And then the second coach said that, uh, after I reported the offer, you know, later in the day, he said that Chris was going to talk to Ohio State again that night and start working out logistics to visit the weekend of January 15th. I expect Michigan to fight to keep him in the boat, though. Uh, so we'll see what happens down the stretch. But basically, here's what Chris has to consider. I, I now have an offer for my dream school. Uh, it was my number one school, but Michigan has shown me so much love for the process, and I've been committed to them for so long. Uh, and, and I truly do like Michigan, so what do I do here? My dream school or the school that's been with me for the longest? Now, Ohio State does have, uh, you, you know, very legitimate reasons why they ha- weren't able to go on Chris as early as some other schools. So it, it'll be interesting to see how it shakes out. One thing that's very sure is that Chris is very interested in Ohio State right now. Yeah, I, I was <clears> – I did not mention – he attend Indianapolis, Ben Davis High School, so good reference there. All right, let's move on to the Texas guys. We're going to break down player for player all of your future Buckeyes. But there is there are three dudes there that Ohio State is still actively recruiting and certainly in the mix for, so we're going to get to them first. The first of which we expect to commit in the next uh, 48 hours or so, if I can do my math correctly, but we'll see on that. Donnie Corley, the wide receiver out of King High School, arguably the best player in Michigan this past season. What's the latest? Well, Donnie's mind is made up. I know that. He told me yesterday that a decision has been made. Um, but where he's going, I'm still not 100% sure. Uh, the two finalists remain the same, Michigan State and Ohio State. I go back and forth at this point of where, what I think he's going to do. Uh, for Ohio State, uh was something interesting to me uh, that was said uh, by one of his family members this week was that uh, we've already talked about that Ohio State official visit in mid-December being a game changer. Uh, he, Donnie was pretty much all set for Michigan State, and, and that visit really changed some things. But when the process first started, Michigan State had a huge need at receiver, and Ohio State's need wasn't very it wasn't the same. But now. When you see Michael Thomas leave for the NFL and, and Jalen Marshall leave for the NFL, the need in Columbus changed, and that was pointed out to me by one of Corley's family members. So we'll see what Donnie does on Saturday when he announces during the U.S. Army All-America Bowl, but uh, the need at receiver in Ohio State has changed, and that's something that Donnie's seriously considering as well. How has Corley looked down there in Texas? Uh, he definitely belongs. Uh, he's playing on the West team. So many great receivers on the West team. Uh, if You know, Austin Max on the East, and him and Demetrius Robertson are clearly uh, above everybody else on the East. But when you flip over to the West, 
so many great receivers, Michael Pittman, Simi Fajoko, J- uh, Javon McKinley, Donnie Corley, uh, Dylan Crawford. Uh, um, you could just, you know, all seven of them are, are really talented, and, and Donnie's uh, certainly proved why he's one of the best in the country down here. You had a recent crystal ball flip of our latest. I don't know if you can call it a flip. You can educate us here, but. I have to admit, I sort of thought the ship had maybe sailed on Jordan Fuller, the star defensive back or athlete prospect out of New Jersey. And I saw your crystal ball flip and got all excited. Let us know about Jordan. Well, I think Jordan Fuller is going to be a Buckeye. Uh, I wish I would have rode, out, rode it out uh, when I crystal balled him to Ohio State back in the spring. But I rode the waves with, with Jordan. Um, and uh, Ohio State was clearly the team to beat in the spring. And I think now as Jordan gets closer to making his college decision. All the reasons why he was so high on Ohio State early in the process uh, are, are, are the reasons why he's high on him at the end. And then, and then when you talk about he hasn't even taken his official visit to Columbus yet, he'll be there on the weekend of the 15th. Um, I, I just think that Ohio State's in a great position for him right now, and they still haven't been able to uh, show him everything at this point. So I know he'll have a great visit. He'll he'll finish the process though. He'll take his visit to Michigan the following weekend. So you never know there. And he's going to try and get one into Penn state before, before he announces his college decision. I think when you look at Jordan Fuller, you look at Chris Evans and you look at DeMar Hamlin, those are the three defensive backs still on the board for Ohio state. I think they take two of them. So it's going to be a first come first serve deal between those three uh, down the stretch leading up to signing day, Ohio State's in the top two, or they're the leader uh, for those guys. So it, it'll, you know, it, it'll be an exciting finish and something that those guys need to pay attention to as well. Fuller played all over the field in um, in high school, kind yeah. of the way Buckeye fans remember Darren Lee was employed. They're playing him at defensive back down there in Texas, and how has he looked? Is that correct? Yeah, he's been one of the top corners on the East team. You're talking about a guy that's six six one, 190 pounds that can run with all the receivers here. Barton Simmons did an article uh, quoting um, the players down here who the top players they matched up against, and you know one receiver talked about Jordan's makeup speed, which is obviously a big big trait that corners have to have. Um, but Jordan was the New Jersey Gatorade Player of the Year, and I think people. Uh, I know that there's another big timer in that state named Rashawn Gary, the number one player in the country by just about every uh, every uh, recruiting service. And it was Jordan who was named the Jersey Player of the Year, or excuse me, the Gatorade Jersey Player of the Year. And I think that Gatorade, they really try and do an in-depth job in picking who wins that award. And Jordan's done everything uh, for his high school team, played quarterback, played receiver, obviously played in the secondary. And, had a terrific year this year and played through a, a wrist injury as a junior and had a great year. Just very explosive, a, a dynamic player. And uh, he wants to play corner. Uh, he's in uh, Ohio State's had that track record with guys like him, including Eli Apple, who's also from New Jersey. I was just going to say, nice to replace a six foot one around 190 pound corner from New Jersey with a six foot one around 190 pound corner from New Jersey. That'd be sweet. The third, prospective Buckeye we're going to talk about. Anyone who's listened to any time I've spoken on the air knows I have a special place in my heart for this guy, and I require Bill Crow to call him weekly, Benjamin Victor. Uh, how does he stand with the Buckeyes, and then go maybe go right into what you think he looks like among uh, all the other receivers down there? Well, I still think Ohio State's very much in it. My crystal ball is on the Buckeyes, but I'm not so sure – that my conf- that would be probably one that would be on my lower end of confidence after spending time around Victor this week. Again, I know he likes Ohio State, but he's got that visit coming up to Florida. They're still, I think they're in the picture. Sounds like he really liked West Virginia. I know some people kind of, you know, raise an eyebrow about that, but I think the Mountaineers are very much in it, and I'm not sure what, what Victor's going to do. Ohio State's in it, and, uh, um, you know, he, he's he's remained in touch with the Buckeyes staff, but I think even the Buckeyes commits down here, uh, not to say that Benjamin Victor's not a target for them, but I think Donnie Corley and Jordan Fuller uh, was there, have been their main target uh, in San Antonio this week. 
I was going to say, do you think a quarterly commitment to Ohio State would render uh, Victor out of the class? You know, I, well, I think Ohio State would take them both, and I'm not sure how Benjamin Victor would react to that. Okay. Um, let's go through the Buckeyes that are down there. There's several of them. The first one had been injured in high school, and I have to admit I was injured to see how he's going to play down there. Jonathan Cooper, the defensive end out of Kahana. Yeah, he said he's fully healthy. He's made plays. He's been disruptive as a pass rusher. He's been uh, been able to be a difference uh, in the run-stop drills. He's, he's, he's shown why he's one of the best defensive ends in the country. He's got ultra quick. Oh, he's very quick. Some of these guys down here got a little more weight on them uh, coming off the edge. So, uh, you know, for Jonathan, he'll just continue to develop. He's shown that he can put on weight, and and uh, I know he'll put on more in, in Columbus. Uh, he, he He's a five-star for us. He's right there on the fringe. I don't think he's going to lose the, lose his fifth star for us. But but uh, he, he's certainly a top 50 player and has shown that down here in San Antonio. Am I want to mention this? Yeah, offensive lineman Michael Jordan is there, but he's hurt. And Drew Christman, the punter, has punted. So, you know about them. Um, Jake Hausman, the tight end. Just knows how to play. A very seasoned, uh, smart guy who, uh, not a, you know, can play attached, can, can play unattached, uh, off the line of scrimmage, can play on the line of scrimmage. Uh, sure-handed, uh, knows how to run routes, knows how to get open, just a complete player. How did he pass on the eye test? Well, he's standing next to Isaac Nada, who's one of the bit freakier tight ends I've seen in a long time. Uh, um, but, J- you know, Jake's one of, the top ten, or one of the top tight ends in the country. He's the number three tight end in the country, according to the 24-7 sports composite. And uh, he he certainly, you know, he's a guy that he he belongs down here. He, he, you know, so Luke Farrell would have belonged down here too. I think that the Bucknuts readers know how high I am on Luke Farrell. I, I I love Luke Farrell's upside. I think he's got uh, no disrespect to Jake, who I think is going to be productive at, at Ohio State. I think Luke Farrell has a chance to be really special when you you start talking six six two forty and. He's a little faster than Jake, and, and uh, uh, so uh, I look forward to seeing what both of those guys do as Buckeyes. No doubt. They'll both be young this year, but I think both are going to get playing time. In fact, Marcus Baugh will step into the starting role and has at best been inconsistent um, to this point, so we look for a lot of both those guys as youngsters. Two guys that I know have made an impression down there that I want to finish with here. The first, a guy you've been high on really from the start, um, even before the bandwagon started, that's Demario Call at North Ridgeville. Yeah, I got lucky that I just knew someone in Cleveland that called me up and, and told me about him before he even had a profile on any network. And, uh, and 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 what's funny is Ohio State offered that day, so he just called me up and said, "Hey, I, Ohio State offered this kid," and and uh, um, so. I was able to get in touch with them, and it, it was during the spring because it was at a track meet that my guy saw him. And there's no question he's got some juice to him, and, and he's a great runner. And he's one of the top playmakers in the country. His ability to cut and, and, and find his top end speed quickly is elite. Uh, DeMario is just uh, – he's just got that inner toughness that you love. He He's a competitor. He loves playing. He's fully engaged in practice. If he's not in on the rep, he's taking a mental rep. And when he takes a mental rep, he's vocal. He's calling out the play. Uh, call, you know, it, it, he's really fun to watch, and he's really having a, such a good time down here uh, just playing football. He's very excited to be here uh, and, and compete and put the pads on. And uh, I think he's excited to represent the U.S. Army All-America Bowl. I, 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 he's just one of my favorite guys. I, I'm getting excited talking about him. I, I really – look forward to this. I really hope he's very successful at Ohio State because he's just one of my favorite young men in this class. Just a, just a good dude. But uh, the thing that makes DeMario McCall so good, I mean, obviously he's quick, he can run, and, and we talked about the athleticism and the toughness, but he's just got great balance. So he's not the biggest cat in the room, but he is strong for his size, and he's got great balance, which makes him even stronger. It's hard to get him on the ground because – you know, he can quickly, if he gets, you know, if he feels contact, he can quickly stay sturdy. You know what I mean? Sure. 
No, he, I think McCall is one of the guys that kind of popped up early in recruiting. There wasn't really a great amount of competition for him in that he was a, pretty much known to be a Buckeye from the start. So those guys tend to leave the radar a little bit for recruiting, but I have a feeling he's going to be a fan favorite in um, Columbus for sure. That short, I mean, he's got the legitimate just short burst quickness that you just can't um, – just can't get many players. All right, I want to finish with a guy who it sounds like has made an impression since day one, and it's, if anybody's going to move up in the rankings from the Ohio State mix, it's Austin Mack, the wide receiver out of Indiana, your hometown, or your home state for that matter. Yeah, we already have Austin so high. He's the number four receiver in the country, but there's definitely been discussion amongst our staff about if he's a five-star or not, and I wrote about that on Bucknuts earlier this week. But – so many people have walked up to me at Army Bowl practice Tuesday, whether it was Coach Elijah Brooks, the head coach at DeMassa High School, Jordan Fuller, uh, just other guys that know I'm from Indiana and just said something nice about Austin Mack. And uh, so he's really standing out. And, and uh, it actually been a few months since I've seen Austin in person, so it was just a reminder how big he is in the lower half. And uh, I think that sometimes gets overlooked at receiver. Um, but, but Austin's got a running back frame from the waist down. And uh, he's a guy that when he gets in space in the open field, he's tough to bring down because he's so physical that, that he can run through contact. And, and then he's got speed. you got to remember he ran a 4-4 at Ohio State's camp two years ago, which uh, he left Columbus with an offer. And at the time, we were still trying to figure out if he was going to be a national recruiter or not. And uh, while we are trying to figure that out, Ohio State moved him up to the top of their board. And uh, I, I know in talking to people that Austin Mack has been a guy that, that the Buckeyes have had on their board higher than a lot of the blue chip names that, you know, were listed as the high, high-ranked high guys from, from the beginning. Uh, Ohio State sources would say that you're crazy if you think those those guys are better than Austin Mack. And Mack's only gone out and validated uh, what, you know, people close to the Ohio State program have been saying over the, the course of his senior year. Now, Mack got hurt, and so he was out for a lot of the, the spring and summer, uh, but he came back and did that Nike camp and then was terrific at the opening, had an outstanding senior year where he, you know, did, played a lot of running back, also had nine interceptions, and then he's come out here and, and, and continues to show that he's got some elite ability. Yeah, physically, I mean, you know, it's hard to get adjusted to playing receiver as a freshman, but physically it looks like he'll be ready for it. Now we now know that this conversation made me feel very old. Elijah Brooks, I covered Elijah Brooks, by the way, at the math. I asked him about his – Summer League buzzer beater to beat O'Connell. That was one of his uh, basketball. I, I know, Elijah's my boy. He's young though, so don't don't be old. It's I, the thing I love about Elijah. I love seeing young people do well, and Elijah's one of them. He's he's a young head football coach, coaching arguably the best high school football program in the country. So don't date yourself, Dan. Elijah's young. Yeah, he's a tough little guy. I think he was like more like your fullback type. Um, I can't remember who the tailback was. He was a stud. But anyway, DeMatha, you're he's right. He's really smart. He's really smart. Yeah, they smart average, people rise to the top. Yeah, he, he's a stud. DeMatha averages about 10 Division One guys a year. This year, this year, no different. So for the next few days, obviously we've got the game coming up. But of the guys we mentioned, am I right that Corley is the only one that's going to do the hat dance? Yeah, Corley's announced on Saturday. And, and like I said, he knows where he's going. So All right. Uh, who knows? But I guess that, you know. I guess he could still change his mind. So I don't know if that's good or bad for the Buckeyes either way. So we've got the game coming up. We've got coverage through there. We've got the quarterly announcement. Keep it locked, the Bucknuts. Keep it locked, 24-7 sports. We've got the guys on the scene. Thank you very much, Steve. Appreciate it, Dan. Appreciate it, everyone.